it's like a plant. If you put a plant in the right environment, it will thrive. If you're putting it in the wrong environment, it will die. Mm -hmm. So choosing what A-level school you go to, um, sixth form or college, whatever it is that's best, choose what's best for you. Um, obviously people are like, oh, I want to go to the same school as my friend. And I'm, and I don't want to sound like horrible. That's great. But just because it's good for your friend doesn't mean that's good for you. You go to the same school as your friend, your, th your friend is thriving and you're not, hmm. a bit of resentment may even come up in that, in that friendship. hello 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 again you are welcome again to this channel where we inspire ourselves we educate ourselves and we inform ourselves um it's nice to see you here it's nice to know that you're always here to support the channel and um, i'm really glad that you found time out of no time to be here um today i have a wonderful speaker I always have wonderful guests. I have no words to qualify her. Short of words to qualify her. But when you listen to her, you will definitely know what I'm talking about here. Now, today's topic is pitfalls to avoid in your journey from secondary to university. So we're talking to the youth here, the younger generation who are making decisions about going from secondary to A-levels to university, choosing careers and all of that. So... As a parent, as a brother, as a sibling, as a sister, as a student yourself, if you know anyone who needs to listen to this, call them and say it is time to listen to our guest for today. Now, the interesting thing about what we're doing today and about the topic is that it's so wide. Pitfalls to avoid in your journey from secondary to University, there's so much to talk about, and we're doing this in series. And I am so privileged to have an undergraduate who has been through a journey herself, and she's given me her time. How golden, a golden opportunity to have her time with us. And she's going to take us through um, a series of talks. The next one will be on Saturday. Saturday. For you not to miss out on the next talk, you need to like, share, subscribe so that when we come on air, you are aware that we are here. So we have a next talk about five series we have with our excellent Bolariwa Dupe. So let's, let's listen. If you have questions, if you have comments, please write them down below. I invite on the screen my special guest. You are welcome. Nice to Thank see you. you. Thank you for the introduction. It's, <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Um, it's It really is an honor that you even asked me to speak. So thank you for the opportunity. Allow me to share. Thank you. Thank you. I know you, you're you loaded. You're loaded. And because of that, you, we can't do this in just one sitting. We want to make it sweet and simple. So, yes, we are here to talk about the first topic in the series of pitfalls to avoid and the first topic is going to be choosing your a-level subjects choosing your schools choosing your colleges and she is here to talk to us about it but before we talk about that could you please introduce yourself and your journey so far sure thing um hello to everyone who's watching my name is Dupet. um i also go by my middle name once in a while ruth so some, if anyone ever knows me, I'm also Ruth. Um, I'm currently an undergraduate student studying economics and finance at the University of Southampton. Um, well, my journey with higher education has not been the most conventional or the most um, straightforward as some other people. I've taken a gap year. I've, well, I've taken technically two gap years, sort of take time to either redo exams or just sort of find out what where my passions lie and what I want to do. In addition to that, I've also changed my um, undergraduate course. So previously I was studying a uh, master's of science. Well, it's an MSci, but I was studying physics um, at the University of King's College London. Um, but life circumstances and changes in what I wanted to have for my future, I decided to change and I'm currently doing economics and finance. So it's a bit of a 
round and round journey, but here I am. I thank God. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that introduction. And um, so you've you're the right person to choose for this because you've gone through it all. So all of the topics we're going to be talking about and viewers, everything we're going to be talking about today is straight from the heart and it's based on experience clearing, gap year, apprenticeship, um, reality versus ideal, student accommodation, common mistakes. She is here to talk to us about them and we will be doing this in series, like I said. So watch out for the next one. It's coming up on Saturday. But for today, we have choosing a-level subjects, schools, and even colleges. So could you please tell us about um, choosing A-level subjects, schools, and colleges? Thank you. Sure thing. So um, most likely when you're choosing an A-level subject or your college, you'll be doing it at the same time of choosing what subjects you're going to study at A-level. Um, I think I'll start with the subject area because most people tend to I feel like know where they want, what they want to study more so than where they want to study sometimes. So um, not to sound cliche, but choose a subject that you actually enjoy and you, you're actually good at because it makes things life a bit more easier. If you really detest a subject, you I don't think you're going to put a lot of effort into studying it, into doing the problem sets, into asking for help, you'll be sort of reluctant to get work done. And that can also reflect in your grades. I know um, for me personally, subjects I did not personally enjoy, I did not put in as much effort. And that also reflected in my work ethic and my grades. Um, so obviously common knowledge, choose a subject you like and a subject you enjoy and maybe even a subject that you're good at why not make it easy for yourself if you excel at something do it and it, it just makes life easier for you you're not constantly sort of facing an uphill battle not to say that you shouldn't obviously push yourself in other areas but just to make life a bit more easier for yourself but that being said, if there is a specific university um, course or apprenticeship that you do want to pursue in the future, they will have, most of them will have specific requirements or specific um, subjects that you they want you to study. So I think is as much as you should choose what you're good at, um, what you enjoy, also think about, oh, would, they, would a certain university, would a certain apprenticeship want me to have studied this specific? particular subjects. So have a quick look at some uni pages. For example, if you want to study medicine, I know they really like it that you have chemistry and um, biology, in and out, but mostly chemistry, maths, biology, maybe psychology. It's a whole mis mismatch of different combinations you can choose, but it's always good to do research, look ahead and sort of tailor that to what you want to do. And I think one thing I'll add to that is also probably try and choose subjects that give you a bit of flexibility for whatever university course or apprenticeship that you want to do. Um, it's all about the transferable skills. So if you're choosing, for example, um, I say maybe maths or something like that, or like even a physics or a science, what it is, it's that it's not necessarily the topic that you're learning, while some of it is the content you're learning, it's the skills you're developing whilst learning that subject. So if you choose a, a topic or a subject that allows you to develop a lot of transferable skills, it gives you a lot of leeway and flexibility also with whatever it is that you want to do at university or during an apprenticeship. So things that allow you to develop um, analytical skills, things that allow you to um, develop your writing, your creativity, things that allow you to just to be very flexible in all areas of life, I will also recommend. Um, just to plug it, as I did study it before, physics is a, is a great option. <laughs> so if anyone wants to do that, I highly recommend you're doing a science and you're doing quite a lot of maths at the same time, two in one is a great option. But um, I think the main thing with choosing your A-level subject, and it's also similar to uni university, is all about planning and research. Um, I know there's a very um, well-known phrase, it's fail to plan, plan to fail. So it's all about doing the research, just looking ahead of time instead of allowing things to sort of catch you unawares. Um, I will also um, 
just a signpost to extra resources. I know that you did another video with another guest. Um, I believe her name was Oyinda Sola Bello. Yeah, so anyone, if you have time, I'll recommend you go and check out that previous video. She gives very good advice and very relevant information and quite a lot of your other videos. So if you're still getting a bit stuck and confused, I highly recommend other people to go and check out your past videos. I think that'll be very useful for them as well. Okay. Um, so you mentioned something about choosing subjects that give you that opportunity for transferable skills. Is it all subjects that would actually help you um, have the opportunity or are there particular subjects you would recommend someone who is in secondary school now to, to think of? Are there subjects that are actually cut across the board or because I'm thinking, okay, with music and I want to be a doctor. I don't know if it fits in. I don't know. So what are those subjects? Because now people, secondary school students are choosing subjects and they're thinking, oh, how do I know what subjects to choose in my A-levels that will give me that broad um, start in life? Yeah. So in that case, not stereotypic. Well, it's generally mostly like the maths, the sciences and some of the English or something like history or psychology, the quite academically rigorous um, subjects, I will say. But that being said, that's not to say you shouldn't pursue, um, quote unquote, the more creative um, subjects like music, art, etc. Reason being is when you're um, applying and you're writing a personal statement and even just throughout your life, you want to be a, a quite a well-rounded individual individual you don't want to be a person who only is like sits in a box and only has sort of tunnel vision so if for example you have an instrument that you've been playing and you're really good at it i will say why not take that in addition to maybe the other required um subjects that your future course may want you to take so in terms of general application the sciences the math stuff like english literature um history things like that i think are generally applicable to many courses obviously some courses do want you to have more specific subjects um but that being said i think also being a well-rounded individual is something that a lot of people forget that they need to be so yeah. you don't want to just because saying oh because i took art i'm not you can take art and be great at maths and if you take art and take maths you can, I don't know, study maths and then maybe transfer into data analytics in the future. But, or you can go into maybe, you can go and study architecture at university if you do like maths and art. So I think, firstly, it depends on what you, the individual really wants, number one. Um, but I would say the sciences, maths and English generally tend to allow room for flexibility and going in and out of different courses. Um, I think it would be very hard to say I want to become a doctor and all you did was um, art, music, um, I don't know, creative, um, critical thinking, so on and so forth. Not that it's not possible. It's just a, it's just a bit a lot harder. So um, that's what I will personally recommend with that. Okay. Okay. That, that now takes me to, um, I know someone has said it in the previous videos saying UCAS is your friend. UCAS website is your friend. Um, for someone who is choosing A-level subjects, how does UCAS come in? So I will say it's sort of firstly familiarizing yourself with how the sort of tabs and the links that UCAS gives you. Um, so UCAS does have a lot of links that they can use to signpost you to re very relevant information. So one thing is use it because it's, it's, it's built for our system. So it's very relevant and they tend to have very important and relevant information and they do keep things very up to date. So one thing is if you're unsure if information is up to date on UCAS, 99.9% .9 it will be up to date. So you can trust UCAS in that sense. Um, go back to the homepage. Okay. Uh, homepage. I think. Okay, homepage. And yeah. then click courses. Okay, courses. And then if you want, let's say you want to stay in England, you. You, you've already chosen undergraduate. Oh, okay. You choose your location and okay, English. options, and then you type in what course you want to do. Okay. 
So then what this will do is it will bring you up a list of sort of relevant courses based on what you typed in and which universities sort of um, provide them. And it will give you sort of a description of, for mm. each university of how long the course is, um, if it's a BA honours and things like that. So all you do is then click on, if something looks, oh, this looks kind of interesting, you'll click on it and then it will lead you to more information where you can read more about the course options. Okay. It'll give you like a course summary so you kind of know what it is about the course, the type of modules you take there. And I think it also gives you um, tips on how to apply deadlines and also maybe entry requirements as well. Okay. So I think using UCAS, this is just like a very basic overview of how you can use UCAS, but using it in this way is if you're not too sure, you can think, okay, maybe you want to study in Ireland, I, I don't know, or you want to study in Scotland, you can type in the course, choose the location, and just sort of see what is available to you. Click on it, just go through it and say, oh, this looks kind of interesting. Okay, highlight that tab, let's go on to the next tab. Oh, this one looks kind of interesting. Let me also look at that. And you can just sort of write down your list of options. And that sort of gives you a starting point in where you can start doing more research. Okay. So that's, this is just, it's, I feel like you can use UCAS a bit more. You can also sort of do this a little bit with if you're searching for apprenticeships as well. So UCAS is very useful and very relevant to um, so our current location as well. Okay. On UCAS, I think they also have things like events. So events, yeah. The reason why this is good is because not only does it give you links to open days, it's also mm. for when you're writing personal statements, it's also sort of like taste of days to sort of get an idea. If you type in, I don't know, you want to do something with medicine, it gives you a link to open courses or like taste of days mm. or things you can do. So you can sort of get a taste of what it is. So you can even, that can further guide you in, oh, do I think this is really what I want to do. So mm. it's very useful in that sense as well. Okay, good, great, thank you. To a certain extent, and I say, take what I say with a pinch of salt. This is just my personal opinion. I think the uni, the A-level school or the college you go to, to a certain extent, maybe even matters a bit more than the subject that you pick. I will say, make sure you go to a school that works well for you you know that their teaching style and their support system is one that you will excel and thrive in. Um, because sometimes some people, it's not that they don't understand the content of what they're learning, it's just the environment they're in. And it's like a plant. If you put a plant in the right environment, it will thrive. If you're putting it in the wrong environment, it will die. Mm -hmm. So choosing what A-level school you go to, um, sixth form, or college, whatever it is, that's best. choose what's best for you. Um, obviously, people are like, oh, I want to go to the same school as my friend, and, I'm, and I don't want to sound like horrible. That's great, but just because it's good for your friend doesn't mean that's good for you. You go to the same school as your friend, your, thr your friend is thriving, and you're not. Hmm. A bit of resentment may even come up in that, in that friendship. So I think choose what is best for you and these are some factors you take when looking for the best um sixth form or college um one thing i will say to look for is choose one that when you look at the every every school college has a prospectus where they tell you about the subjects and oh why you should come to our place why we're the best take it very seriously look at the data and the statistics that they've produced and compare it to other places say okay this one has gotten really good results here overall but what about their english department if that's what you want to study what about their i don't know their science department if that's where you want to go to so look at it in terms of overall the whole school environment because obviously you may take part in extracurricular you want to make friends you still want to be able to enjoy your time learning also look at it in terms of whatever subject you want to study because a school may be great with their sciences but if you want to um, maybe pursue drama and their drama department is not that strong, you don't want to enter a situation where you won't be adequately supported. So look at the whole school, the whole college, um, overall, the big picture, but then also look at the specific department. So when you go to college open days, sixth form open days, um, I think always ask, ask questions, stuff like, okay, um, 
how are current students performing? Um, how are you adapting to different learning styles? Um, is this mostly book-based work? How are revision sessions conducted? Or just things like that, things that will probably help you. Is this, will exams be, how are exams conducted in the uni? I'm sorry, in the, in the school? Um, what about mitigating circumstances? How does the school and the specific department handle that? If someone's struggling for help, how do you support extra help and extra learning resources? Arts, those kind of things, because not everyone doesn't learn in the same way. Um, some people need extra time to grasp the subject. Some people, they just need to repeat things over and over again. So ask questions that suit your learning style best and see how they respond and how they um, sort of prepare for that. Um, and another department in a college or a sixth form you should really be looking at is their career development um, department and their career education department. This department is very pivotal because these are the people who will give you the support for applying for apprenticeships, applying for university. If your college of sixth form has a very good one, they will be able to guide you step by step and you will not, even if things do not go the way you plan, they will be there to support you so you end up getting onto the path you want to go into. I've heard horror stories of people going to their sort of careers developer and sort of smashing down their dreams maybe because they didn't get a certain grade. You don't want to go to a school that makes you feel, oh, because I did not get a certain number, therefore I am useless, I am worthless. Don't do that to yourself because that is completely not true. But you do want to go to a school where they will support you and push you, but they'll also be honest and realistic with you. So also ask a lot of questions about their career development and their career paths. I know for me, um, when I was at Dartford, I had my I had this idea that I really wanted to study physics at, um, at, at Oxford University. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I went there on an open day, but but my grades initially, I think, were not the right grades. But my careers developer person, she was so lovely. She called up Oxford University then and there, said, this is what we have. This is what we get. How do we get there? And she, we sort of sat down and designed a pathway for where I want to achieve my goals and also alternatives in case I didn't get there. So that's the kind of support you really want. Someone, people who will be there to support you. So also, don't forget that department. I think a lot of people don't realize it until it's too late and that also leads me on to the topic of I know in some places it's sort of changing schools and or changing from comprehensive to grammar um, I say most of the time it's recommended you stay where you are because you sort of know your teachers you know their teaching styles you're familiar with the people around you and they already know how they can support you where your weak points are so in that kind of situation I'll say if you know the school you're in, the teachers are there are good and they will support you, stay. However, if the school's not offering what you really need, in that case, I will say move. But that being said, moving to, let's say for example, a comprehensive to a grammar school, um, the only thing I will, like a little side note I will say is that when it comes to um, contextual offers, sometimes staying at a comprehensive school may play more in your favour. So um, obviously they know that maybe your school doesn't have as much resources. They know that maybe you may not have had as much opportunities for maybe extracurriculars, so on and so forth as um, other students may have may have had if they went to, I don't know, a private school or um, a grammar school, so on and so forth. So staying at a comprehensive school sort of means that you can get a, your, with certain things you can get like a, it's not, I won't say 100% say, it's 100% in your favour, but I know if an admissions officer is looking at your personal statement, looking at your grade, and you have practically everything is identical, it's just that, you went to a comprehensive school, you did not get given as much opportunities as this other person. I'm thinking they may want to favour you more because they're like, well, this person has practically mimicked what this other person has done, given limited resources. This is a person when if we push the right resources on them, they will thrive. That is what they're sort of thinking. Um, so sometimes 
changing from a comprehensive to a grammar is sort of a tricky um sort of a tricky area to navigate um also because changing schools changing teaching styles perspectives so it, i i'll say change if it's in your best interest to change do not just change because oh the school is prestigious or so on and so forth um i uh, it's it's a Yes, you want to go to a good school, unless the school is going to give you specific opportunities that you need for something else, then I'll say probably change. But if that's not the case, don't put yourself at a disadvantage because some of those teachers already know their students who have stayed on. They don't really know you. So they only have like two years to sort of know you, like you, write a great personal statement, write a great reference about you and support you. Whilst other students may have had five years of their teacher knowing them and knowing the best way to support them. So I will say when changing schools, think about it in that context. Mm. Unless you're going to um, a college, then sometimes that may be, that's a whole different sort of ballpark. Wow. So I think I rambled with that, but. No, that's that, no, it's, it's, it's spot on. Cause yeah, you, you made a very critical point there, especially with the personal statements. They may just give you um, um, a personal statement of what they've known you for in the past just two yeah just two years whereas you have personal statements from teachers who have known you right from when you first started they're able to tell you know say more about you rather than the generic um <laughs> templates they will use yeah. for everyone and even people who are reading the personal statements will know they don't know this person so well, well it's yeah. the same thing for you just like when students um get results and you see that it's the same thing copied and pasted it's just the names that change for different yeah. <laughs> so yeah it, that that's that's a good point um i'm sure for viewers listening to this um you're at the point where you're making trying to make a decision on moving school or staying at the same school to your a levels make sure you're taking the right decision and i pray god will help you with that uh thank you very much for your time <laughs> but yeah you spent so much time you you know you give me so much of your time today and i really 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 appreciate it we all appreciate because you have inspired us, you have um, educated us, and you have informed us. That is the main purpose of this channel, to educate, inform, and inspire. So thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday again. So viewers, get ready to tune in on Saturday. Make sure you're liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you very much, Ms. Dupere Bolaro, for this. No, my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See you on Saturday. <laughs> Oh no, see you on Saturday. Saturday. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it was nice speaking to an undergraduate who has been there, who is still there and who is ma making waves in her field. Can you imagine someone going from one course to the other? She has a lot of experience to share with us. And that is why we have brought her on the show. I like what she said, plant, put a plant in the right environment and it will thrive exactly so make sure you're asking questions when you go for the that open evening don't just uh just watch what they're doing but ask questions that will benefit you thank you very much for watching and i'll see you on saturday on the next topic in the series of pitfalls to avoid in your journey from secondary to university bye, -bye.